Released in May of 1989, this $200,000 comedy farce is really only notable for being the first feature film to star A-list funny man Adam Sandler. But before he even matured or was a cast player in Saturday Night Live, he starred as a struggling comic on board a cruise ship. After his recent string of uninspired, unfunny cash grabs, it's easy to forget Sandler was once a hilarious comic with some truly great material. Sadly, however, we get almost none of that in this sorry excuse for a film. Instead, he puts on stupid voices, mugs for the camera, and generally acts like an incompetent goof for the majority of the 97-minute film. The supporting cast includes Tom Hodges, Scott LaRose, Billy Zane, and Billy Bob Thornton, none of whom are the slightest bit memorable. The story plods along to the incessant sounds of a steel drum calypso band, cheap Muzak, and bland jazz. And the actual presentation style is curiously inconsistent. Sandler himself breaks the fourth wall to introduce us to the story, immediately apologizing for its low budget, and then he schleps the view around the boat like we're watching his personal vlog or something. But other sequences are conventionally shot and edited for some reason. I hesitate to guess what director Valerie Bremen was possibly thinking. Maybe you should avoid telling actual jokes and just stick to improvising and talking with the audience. I thought it was funny. Yeah? A lot funnier than that jerk they hired as the ship's comedian. You actually thought that joke was funny? Let me put it this way. He's funny. The other guy's a hack. Yeah. I am funny. He really is a hack, isn't he? The lethargic and pointless narrative is worsened by constantly cutting away to Miss Universe confessionals, ridiculous dream sequences, and Burt Young as General Noriega who is actually watching the film itself on VHS, who defends his honor by shouting at the TV, we'll see who gets the last laugh, you leftover worthless kangaroo vomit. Besides being awfully paced, the R-rated movie is really quite uncomfortable and awkward. Every scene plays out three times longer than it needs to be, almost as if it was deliberately padded so the picture could qualify for feature length. With unrealistic dialogue and empty characters, the film is devoid of conflict and tension, making it a true struggle to actually sit through. It's no surprise that this film presently sits in IMDb's bottom 10 rated movies of all time. It is just so painfully boring, I regretted watching literally every scene. Going overboard is terrible, not even enjoyable ironically. My score in the rate matic a big fat one. With no redeeming qualities and nary a single laugh whatsoever, it's a wonder Sandler actually managed to have a successful career after this piece of garbage. 